for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Dirty Dollar. Mitchell, Johnny. What do you know about the land of milk and honey? Oh, at 4.30 in the morning. The sun's been up for three hours in Beirut, Lebanon. And it's shining brightly on a happy man by the name of Brett Cunningham on a shipwrecked yacht. Insured by you? Uh-huh. How much is Cunningham happy about? $90,000. Well, don't blame him. Good night, Mitch. The yacht went down in calm weather on a smooth sea, Johnny. Johnny? Well, I've always wondered what milk and honey taste like. We'll return to our program in a moment. But first, I'd like to talk to you about housekeeping. Recently, a woman was interviewing a prospective maid and asked her how she was on light housekeeping. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, said the young lady. I never kept a lighthouse. I admit that's an old joke. But it generally gets a laugh. However, housekeeping is no joke. That's a job from which no one can escape, whether he lives in a house, an igloo, a military barracks, or a governmental building. Yes, housekeeping is a very important job, even in our government. Someone has to see that the plumbing doesn't leak, that electricity, oil, and coal aren't wasted, that the garden is kept in good shape, that the animals are fed, and that the people have a place outdoors in which to enjoy themselves. Actually, all these governmental household tasks are the work of the Department of the Interior, which at one time was called the Home Department. The biggest job of the department is conservation, the protection of the things that make our country a good place in which to live. The land, water, oil, coal, forests, minerals, fish, and wildlife. These are our natural resources. If it weren't for the conservation work of the Interior Department, before too long, all the farm and grazing lands would be washed or blown away, and all the wildlife would disappear from our fields and forests. Another important job of the Department is the development of new natural resources and the caring for our national parks where people are free to go sightseeing or set up camps. And during wartime, the Secretary of the Interior has a special job, namely, making sure that sufficient oil and other fuels are available to our armed forces and defense industries. Yes, our governmental housekeeper, the Department of the Interior, has a most important and vital job in maintaining the comfort and welfare of every citizen of the United States. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Eastern Indemnity and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the milk and honey matter. Expense account item one, $666.45. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Beirut, Lebanon. Quite a fabulous land, this one of Lebanon where ancient mosques and biblical ruins stand hand-in-hand with the most ultra of modern hotels. And quite a fabulous character, this Brett Cunningham. I located him exactly 35 minutes after checking in at the St. George Hotel. He was just where everyone I questioned said he'd be. At the Estuita, a swank gambling casino just outside of town on the Beirut-Damascus Highway. Well, who's out there? He was standing at one of the wheels, all six foot four of him, face flushed and grinning, surrounded by stacks of chips and a young svelte brunette who clung to him with one hand and a champagne cocktail with the other. Faites vos jeux, mes amis, messieurs. Faites vos jeux, s'il vous plaît. Please say we try 13 again. Uh, <laughs> that would be a real joke, Brett. Real joke. Okay, baby, 13 it is. Are you Brett Cunningham? Uh-huh. Okay, Charlie, let her spin. My name is Johnny Dollar. I'd like to talk to you for a minute, Cunningham. Uh, some other time. It's pretty important. Uh, well, don't spin her so hard the next time, Charlie. It takes too long to get action for my money. You are American, no, Mister? That's right. And I just think you are real George, Mr. American. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. 
It's about that yacht of yours, Cunningham. Insurance? Yeah. I figured. Raise my yacht Hey, how about that? Oh. him up for me, Charlie. We miss you. <laughs> it's going to be a big night, baby. A big night. Oh, we've had a real joy. <laughs> real joy. Hey, Boozer. About that yacht. Sure? You got my check with you, Dollar? That comes later. Uh, so what comes now? Some routine questions. Such as? Such as, how come your yacht went down in a smooth sea in calm weather? Oh, worried about a fraudulent claim? Are you? <laughs> hey, put these on double O, Charlie. Well, Mr. Cunningham? Eh? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, she hit a derelict, stove in the bow, went down in less than three minutes. Just like that. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe you'd like to find out, eh? Well, no harm trying. Oh, sure. You do that, Dollar. You'll find me right here when you're ready to pay off. <laughs> Expense account item two, seven dollars and fifty cents. Cab fare to the casino and back to the harbor in Beirut. Obviously, I was getting nowhere trying to compete with a wind streak and the sultry Nadja for Brett Cunningham's attention. But I figured I might do better with the man who'd sent in the official report on the sinking of Cunningham's yacht, Port Commissioner Floro. I found Commissioner Floro on the second floor of a baked clay office building which was surrounded by bales of drying sheepskins and casks of olive oil and dates. A wheezing electric fan fought a losing battle with the overpowering heat, but it did succeed in spreading the odors around to maximum effect. I regret that you have been welcomed by this unseasonable heat wave, Monsieur Dolan. It's a very unusual weather for Beirut at this season of the year. I'll overlook the weather, Commissioner, in exchange for some information. Oh, you have not read my official report on the sinking of Monsieur Cunningham's yacht? I've read it, yes. Ah, well, then it is not explicit enough for your purposes? Well, I'm not sure. Would you mind running over the highlights for me again? Oh, not at all. At approximately 10.23, the evening of the 28th of November, Monsieur Cunningham's yacht, the happy time, struck a submerged derelict from 200 meters off the coast of Lebanon. It went down within three minutes' time. There's no question about that being the cause of the sinking? You have a sworn affidavit to that effect, signed by Monsieur Cunningham and one sailor out of the crew of eight who survived the sinking with him. No other witnesses? None. Anything else to back up their statement? A Lebanese gunboat proceeded to the scene the next day. It found considerable floating debris, such as the trail, life preservers, and a large pool of oil. Uh-huh. Also, it located the derelict, which was reportedly responsible for the accident, and destroyed it with gunfire. No sign of the yard itself? Sounding equipment located it resting on the bottom in some 70 fathoms of water. Where was Cunningham going when he hit that derelict? Oh, he was en route from Istanbul, Turkey, to Beirut. Pleasure trip? Uh, oui. What about Cunningham himself? Oh, he has visited Beirut uh, several times during the past year. Apparently wealthy, his source of income is unknown to us. He devotes much of his time to gambling while here. Any uh, business associates? Friends? Ah, oh, only the croupiers. And that girl, Nadja? Oh, well, there are many like her here in Beirut. With Monsieur Cunningham, it is a different one each visit. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for your trouble, Commissioner. Oh, you're very good, Monsieur Dollar. Uh, however, I have the feeling you are not entirely satisfied with the results of this interview. It was a clear moonlit night, Commissioner. A calm sea. There must have been lifeboats aboard. That he saw it. I was just wondering why only two survivors out of a crew of eight. So you find it a disturbing factor, monsieur? Don't you? Well, yeah, my duty ends with the factual reporting of what has occurred, monsieur Delau. So does mine. Before I left him, Commissioner Floro gave me the name and the address of the sailor who survived the sinking. I found him deep in the native quarter, behind the bazaars, on a narrow, twisting street, black with shadows, that was called El Ekbad. Oh, it is to be regrettable, Effendi. It is to be most regrettable. What is? My sweethearts, Effendi, they are so delicate, so... So sensitive. It is their feeding time. Interruptions disturb them. You understand. You're talking about those birds in there? My sweetheart, Effendi. 
My lovely feathered darling. They are so sensitive. I cannot talk now. You understand. You will let me sleep. Now, just a minute. You're Casimir Andesco? It is so, FND. My name is Dollar, insurance investigator. I'd like to ask you a few questions about the sinking of Brett Cunningham's yacht. But what is there that Casimir Andesco, a humble sailor, could tell you about that, FND? That's what I'd like to find out. Very well. Come in, if you please. Here, FND, please be seated on the chapeau, eh? If it does not offend you by its own goodness. No, it'll do fine. Now, uh, now, if you do not mind, I will feed the half of my heart <laughs> while we talk. They are so hungry, poor things. And they're so sensitive. Oh, go right ahead. <laughs> I, I have collected them from all over the world, FND. My favorites, such as Fatima here, I take with me on all my voyages. I'm interested in your last voyage. What happened? Oh. It was so unfortunate, Effendi. It was about 10 o'clock on the night on the 28th of November, from 200 meters off the shore of Lebanon. The Archie took a derelict and went down in less than three minutes. Mm. So unfortunate. Now tell me what really happened. Effendi. I've sworn to this information before the commissioner of the board. I read the report. I don't have to believe it. Yeah. Dear Krishna, beloved of all beloveds, <laughs> for you, my sweetest one. Well, Mr. Andesco? I tell you, I am but a poor man. How much? You understand, it is not for myself that I ask, I tell you. It is for these poor ones here. How much? Andesco is a reasonable man. He will ask only for the 10% of the claim. $9,000. Oh, I couldn't ask anyone to be that reasonable. Is it at a... Six thousand, perhaps? Five hundred. Effendi, my ancestors would show me in paradise. Well, that would show pretty good taste. Five hundred. Oh, it is most regrettable, Effendi, but unless you can tell you nothing... Okay. It is not that I am mercenary, Effendi. So far as money is concerned, I, I would not ask one dinar for myself. You, you understand what I am saying, Effendi? Oh, sure. It's strictly for the birds. Expense account item three, $27.50. A radiogram to Intelligence Division, Turkish Police in Istanbul. Expense account item four, $3.50. Cab fare out to the Estuardo Casino. The return trip being occasioned by a phone call, just as I was climbing into bed for the night. Johnny Dollar. Brett Cunningham, Dollar. Oh, what's on your mind, Cunningham? That check for 90 grand. Well, oh, you sound anxious. Your win streak peter out? No. I'm no, still doing all right. But you've just hit all over the board. Being cryptic doesn't suit your personality. How about honesty? I'll be happy to read any character references in the morning. Would you rather read my signature on a quit claim to that insurance tonight? You don't sound as though you've been drinking. I haven't. Well, why the sudden change of attitude? Are you interested in analyzing me or in that quit claim? Where are you? At the casino. I'll be right there. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? The son of a Baptist minister, he entered Union College at Connected in New York at the age of 15. He was the fourth vice president to become president through the death of the chief executive. One of his first acts as president was the signing of the Civil Service Act. The territory of Alaska was organized during his administration and standard time was adopted throughout the country. If you don't know his name by now, here are two more clues. While he was president, the American Federation of Labor was organized, and the Brooklyn Bridge was completed. Who was he? Chester Allen Arthur, 21st president of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. 
And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I was stopped at the edge of the casino parking area by an efficient-looking Lebanese police sergeant. Over his shoulder, I could see portable floodlights, a rope-backed crowd, a twisted heap of metal that was once an automobile, and the slim, dapper figure of Port Commissioner Floro. I managed to catch Floro's eye, and he waved me inside the rope and passed the guard. May I ask why you have returned here to the casino at this hour, Monsieur Dollar? Well, I'm not a gambling man, Commissioner. You to see Monsieur Cunningham, then? That's a reasonable guess. Mm, you have arrived too late, Monsieur. Is that Cunningham's car? Oui. Explosive wire to the stopper. As you can see, his death must have been practically instantaneous. Yeah. Efficient, if not neat. Oui. Why did you wish to see Monsieur Cunningham at this hour? He called me. He said he was ready to sign a release on his insurance claim. Oh, and why should he do that? I don't know. And this won't help to clarify it any. For the next three quarters of an hour, Commissioner Floro conducted a crisp, thorough investigation and came up with nothing. One of the police sergeants drove me back to my hotel. Nadja was waiting for me in the lobby. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Well, hello, Nadja. I see uh, you're not wearing mourning. <laughs> you know you're real cute, Mr. Dollar. Nadja likes you. Nadja liked Brett Cunningham, too. Oh, sure. Brett, he was real jaws. Only now Brett is real dead. So now Nadja liked Mr. Dollar. Oh, sure. Only Nadja likes something better than both of you. Well, now, that couldn't possibly be money, could it? <laughs> You're so funny, Mr. Dollar. But of course it is money. $90,000. American. Did Cunningham promise you that insurance money? Oh, yes. Oh, you're too smart to have fallen for a line like that. And you must know that now, if the claim proves valid, it goes to Cunningham's heirs. Sure. That is where Nadia comes in. He named you in his will? No. He married me. Nadia is Mrs. Brett Cunningham. <laughs> is that not real crazy, Mr. Dollar? <laughs> After Nadia dropped her little bombshell and took her giggling departure, I checked with Commissioner Floro, who in turn checked with the Public Records Administration. Brett Cunningham and Nadia had been married the evening before in the manager's office at the Estuido Casino. Expense account item six, $17.25. Radio phone call to Istanbul, Turkey. I spoke with Chief Inspector De Vrighi. Father and part, Mr. Dollar, for not having replied to your radiogram before this. But we have been having some difficulty in obtaining the information you request. Well, that happens, Inspector. What have you run into? We know that Mr. Cunningham's yacht, the Happy Time, sailed from Istanbul on the afternoon of the 24th November bound for Beirut. Our trouble has been with this motor schooner, the El Hussein. The El Hussein? What's that? Oh, a ship of Lebanese registry, 400 tons, launched in 1923. It was being towed by Mr. Cunningham's yacht. Who is the registered owner, Inspector? That is what has taken the time, Mr. Duff. We have no record of him in our files. We've been unable to learn anything about him. His name is Casimir Andescu. A quick run over to the native quarter verified what I was already pretty sure of. And Descu had flown with his birds of a feather. Expense account item six, $55 for the rental of a motor launch. Equipped with skipper, hand winch, a hundred fathoms of good steel chain, and a number of grappling hooks. We sailed out of Beirut Harbor and headed northward up the coast of Lebanon. Four hours and 35 boring minutes later, the boatman roused me from the sun-induced coast. There, Cindy, upon the shore. That is the ruined tower which you see. Fits Commissioner Floro's description, all right. And uh, now, Cindy? We'll do some fishing. I dropped about 70 fathoms of chain overboard with grappling hooks attached, and we began trolling slowly back and forth some 200 meters offshore. A 
approximately two hours before sundown, we got our first flight. I have hooked something, Effendi. Well, it's about time. Let's see what it is. Suddenly, someone objected to our finishing the job. The shooting, Effendi. It is coming from the shore. And that ruined power, I think. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, it's me, Commissioner. I have expected you back hours ago. I was beginning to be concerned that something had happened to you. It almost did. I will tie up the thing. Okay. Watch it. Ah, did you have any success on your search, Monsieur Dollar? Well, that's a matter of definition. I've acquired a bad case of sunburn, a healthy respect for Tommy Gun, Pardon? and this. That? What is it, monsieur? Well, it looks like part of the transom of a lifeboat. Care to look at the name on it? Monsieur? Mm. I couldn't make happy times out of it either. Hey, who's saying? Eh bien, what do you think now, monsieur Dollar? I think I'd better get some sunburn lotion. Oh, what has happened to your face? It looks so funny. I was hoping you'd skip the compliments and invite me in. Oh, sure, Johnny. Thanks. You come here not to pay neither the check, Johnny? I'm going to do something better than that. <laughs> You're real crazy, Johnny. Neither likes you. How well do you like Casimir Andescu? Him? He's a nothing. Why do we talk about him? Well, if we don't, somebody might get the idea that you're guilty of fraud and murder. Johnny, now you're not being real crazy anymore. Not you didn't do these things, you say? Somebody murdered her husband, Brett Cunningham. Oh, sure, but not you didn't do this. And somebody tried to defraud an insurance company out of $90,000 by sinking an ancient wreck called the El Hussein instead of a yacht. Oh, Johnny. Then you know about this. And now Nadia will not get the money. That's the general idea. Oh, that is not nice, Johnny. Why should you tell anyone? If Nadia gave the money, she would give you half. That would be real yours, no? You're missing a point somewhere, Nadia. Or didn't you know that you can't spend money in prison? If Nadia tells you about Cassini and the skew, then she does not have to go? That depends on what she tells me. Oh. Nadia will tell you the truth. Oh, that'll be refreshing. You see, my Brett, he was gambling in Istanbul. He lose much money to Casimir and rescue. Fifteen thousand dollars. And he cannot pay. Casimir does not like this. Oh, I don't blame him. That's a lot of money for a sailor not to collect. Johnny, Casimir is no sailor. He's a big gambler, big smuggler, a real businessman. My apologies to Casimir. Anyway, for Brett to pay off, Casimir tell him what to do about the boat, and they will make the 50-50 on insurance. That was good sense, No. Let's not stop to discuss ethics at this point, shall we? Well, anyway, afterwards, Brett comes here. He gamble and win big. So he wants to pay Casino back what he owes from Istanbul. Brett figured he could collect all the insurance himself, then. Oui. It was smart of you, no? Oh, sure. But Casino said no, and Brett get angry. And that's when he pulled his dog in the manger a bit. What, oh, son? He told Casimir that if he couldn't have it all, he'd see that Casimir didn't have any. So he phoned me to call the whole thing off. Just a bluff to scare Casimir into giving him a better deal. Oui. Only Casimir, he got angry too. And wired Brett's car for him. Oui. Where's Casimir now? I think he's with the yard, Johnny. And where is that? Up north, just inside of Tripoli, there's a small fishing village. Kabadi. Maybe you'll find him there. Maybe. Some 80 kilometers up the coast road from Beirut to Kabadi. Commissioner Floro's car made it in slightly less than an hour. 
It took some 40 minutes longer to make a few discreet inquiries and to locate the yacht in a well-concealed inlet. Even in the dark, the hasty remodeling work was apparent. A dummy stack, paint job, some false superstructure work. She couldn't have looked much like the trim yacht that had departed Istanbul a week or so ago. And even in the pitch dark below decks, it wasn't too tough to tell where Casimir Andescu was keeping himself. Please, Fendi, I regret, but that is far enough. We want to talk with you, Andesco. Ah, uh, that is so regrettable, Fendi. But it is night and sleep time for my sweetheart. They are, they are, they are so sensitive. To have their slumber disturbed would upset them for days. You weren't that considerate about Brett Cunningham. Brett? Oh. oh, that one. A man of immoral stature, Fendi. Without honesty or scruples. To, to such a one, the fate which befell him was not just. You pulled a few fast shuffles in your time, too. Hey, Fendi, you are attempting to approach with me. I should dislike very much to disturb my beloved with the sound of the firearms. You have no idea how objectionable the noise is to Fatima and the others. You weren't so particular about the noise you made with that Tommy gun. Ah, yes. A regrettable incident. Unfortunately, the heat refraction upon the water disturbed my aim. Yes. Obviously, your fishing expedition was successful. Successful enough to provide ground for your arrest on charges of fraud and murder, Monsieur Andescu. Uh, yes. That, that is most regrettable, Apendi. I must ask you to drop whatever weapons you have and return to Beirut in my custody. Oh, but, but you must understand that I, I cannot do that, Appendix. I simply cannot do that. There would be no one left to care for my sweetheart. Watch it, Paul! Laurel? I have a right with you, darling. Shine your light into that corner. Please. Oh. On that street, would not have attempted to battle his way out, but uh, was the wrong thing for him to do. He was right about one thing, though. Oh? Those birds did object to the noise. <laughs> Expense account item seven, $703. Airfare and incidentals from Beirut, Lebanon, back to Hartford. Expense account total, $1,480.20. Incidental remarks, I'd still like to know what milk and honey taste like. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.